Hi guys, my name is Anuj Jindal. Welcome to my channel and today we are going to discuss some more questions from management case studies. So this lesson is going to be very important for the upcoming RBI NCP examinations because you all know that management forms a very important and a very relevant portion of the entire preparation. And uh, the major problem that students face here is that they don't know what kind of case studies can be asked. They don't know what kind of questions can be asked from these case studies. They don't, know, they don't know how to approach these case studies. So there are two problems that we are going to solve uh, in this series. The first problem is to understand what kind of questions are actually framed out of these case studies, how long or short can be these case studies. And the second question which you're going to, second problem that you're going to resolve is the approach that you have to use in order to get to the right answer, okay? So let's start with the first question for today. You can pause the video for a while and go through the entire question and then I will go forward with identifying the keywords that you can use and then we'll go to the jump to the question. Okay. It's about a Michigan based restaurant mini chain which moved to or which started business in Thailand. So it's uh, a case of something similar to McDonald's. Okay. Now these are the keywords that we have. Number one, Michigan based restaurant. That is the first keyword that we have. Number two, as I said, they started uh, a series of units in Thailand. Number three, local customers would rather buy. This means that uh, the customers were more interested in sticking to their uh, staple diet, which was sweet satay, noodle bowl, grilled squid from street vendors at one fifth of the cost. That means there are two uh, parameters here. Number one, they're more interested in sticking to their staple or their local diet and number two number two they are cost sensitive as well or they are price sensitive as well okay european tourist and young thai people these are the tourists here uh, european tourist and young thai people uh, are the local people there so this company realized that they can sell more if they if they are catering to the needs of these two classes of people that is european tourist and young thai people so they changed the menu completely so this is something that did not happen in McDonald's. In McDonald's, so this is a tip I'm giving you before we jump to the question. In McDonald's, they did not change the menu. They just reorganized the menu. They uh, changed the way a burger looks so that it is more acceptable and more enjoyable for a local person in any country. But here, this Michigan based restaurant, Bob's Big Boy, completely changed the menu and introduced European dishes as well as Thai dishes. Okay. So this is where the answer actually lies. We've thought we were bringing American food to the masses, but now we are bringing Thai and European food to the tourist. So they've changed the menu completely. Now the question is, which are the following concepts of management is at play in the above case, globalization, localization, localization or globalization. Okay. Now, uh, provide me with the answers in the comment section below. Let me explain to you the differences between these four. Globalization is when, let's say, uh, McDonald's moves to India and sells as it is. That is uh, uh, the idea of burgers or let's say Italian pizzas moving into or being introduced in India and being liked by people in India. That is uh, an example of globalization. But globalization is uh, when the local food or local stuff becomes more important that is localization okay globalization is uh, a mixture of globalization and localization which means that mcdonald's coming to india and introducing alu tikki burger okay i don't know how tikki is pronounced halu tikki burger so that is global globalization why globalization because it is a burger and alu tikki because it is a local dish and not uh, a US dish. So mixing up both these is localization. Another example would be yoga, power yoga being introduced in the US. Now yoga is an Indian concept, but power yoga is westernizing it. Therefore you're using both globalization as well as localization. And globalization is no term. Uh, it has just been made up by me. Uh, probably in the future it might become a term, but right now it does not exist. Okay, the answer to this question is localization. It looks very close or localization looks to be the correct answer, but it is not. Why? Because I gave you the reason when we were talking about the case study that they did not uh, organize, reorganize or restructure the menu and they did not keep selling burgers. Instead, 
they stopped selling american food and they started selling local food okay they started making local food and selling local food therefore there is no element of globalization here it is all localization now european tour tourists coming into uh, thailand therefore european tourists market being catered to another local food and secondly thai people being catered by uh, the company the food chain and therefore local food being introduced so they did not re, they did not change or they did not reorganize how a burger is made they did not make any innovations or amendments there they just stopped selling burgers and they started selling local food okay therefore the answer is localization i hope you have understood this a very interesting question that was and one of the best questions i believe that can be asked in the examination the second case study that we have says ray croc worked for many years as a sales person it is again between ray croc and mcdonalds how he actually moved to create mcdonalds or uh, uh, occupy mcdonalds and then uh, grow it okay so go through the video go through the sorry case study and these are the keywords that have already been highlighted by me in this one uh, the last part which has been highlighted is the most important according to ray croc if you have got got time to lean you got time to clean about the competition he says if they are drowning to death i would put a hose in their mouth that means very competitive and very aggressive and when he talks about expanding he declares when you are green you grow when you are ripe you rot which means that always stay young when it comes to your business your company and always stay hungry that is when you can grow if you feel ripe if you feel that you already achieved a lot you will start rotting okay let's uh, have a look at the question depending upon his values and thoughts which among the following styles of leadership is best suitable to ray crock now he has a very different style of leadership a very aggressive style of leadership uh, it doesn't talk about democracy at all it doesn't talk about whether he likes to delegate whether he likes to take uh, point take a uh, view points of his subordinates or the management in consideration or not therefore democratic leadership is not being talked about therefore this is not an answer autocratic leadership looks very close because in the way in the aggression with the aggression that he's talking it looks that he should be autocratic but uh, we don't uh, talk about uh, in the case study we don't talk about whether he uses his uh, subordinates or his uh, management's uh, uh, advice or not whether he uh, pushes his advice and his method of leadership onto them or not all those things are not being talked about team leadership again he is uh, not a, a team creator he does not focus on that a lot the main area that we are talking about in this case study is how he uh, accepts or how he uh, you know uses change and how he uses the way uh, humans think in order to uh, uh, you know grow his business so let's come here again and see where exactly can we find the answer when he did croc became convinced that mcdonald's fast food concept would sweep the nation that means futuristic in nature a part of transformation he understands how it is going to change croc died many years ago but the culture he left behind is still very much alive in mcdonald's franchi- franchises in fact new employees received video taped messages some of the more more interesting pronouncements that reflect and carry on his values and are his thoughts on cleanliness so he's talking he's guiding them what is to be done but at the same time he's guiding them to uh, appreciate change to appreciate transformation to appreciate that dynamicity is a part of life and to appreciate aggression therefore he's more of a transformational leader because he is driving people towards something okay and transformational leaders are the ones who do that team leaders autocratic democratic and transactional leaders are more of managers who don't talk about change who don't talk about adoption who don't talk about uh, uh, you know thinking about the future but uh, transformational leadership differentiates from them because it is the one which is most focused on future okay let's come to the next uh, case study please pause the video and read the entire case study the keywords have been highlighted for you it's about jake harvey who has a position on corporate planning staff staff in an organization 
and the organization has determined that something needs to change in the organization there are some problems uh, some structures and some cultures are outdated in the organization and now he is determining what needs to be done okay uh, so he determines that uh, they discovered that the organization is currently structured along classic bureaucratic lines and they need to be competing in a highly dynamic growing and uncertain environment which means the environment has changed has become highly dynamic has become has been rapidly growing therefore they need to change their structure from classic bureaucratic towards a very flexible structure so that uh, they can cope up with the environment now what kind of organization do they need to make that is the question that i'm going to ask you so the question is what type of organization design do you feel this task force should recommend in the third and final phase of the approach to their assignment the options are functional divisional project boundaryless and learning i am very sure uh, if you have read all these structures you would be very easily able to eliminate these three functional divisional and project because they are all obsolete and their old structures which are used in a non dynamic environment okay they used in a non dynamic environment which it has not changed that much but this boundaryless in learning these two are types of organizations which are used or which are created when the environment is dynamic and changing very fast a boundaryless organization is one where different departments do not have boundaries so it is more about accessibility it is more about accessibility ease of access uh, for the simple reason that all the departments are equally important for the business and people from one department should be able to establish relationships should be able to communicate with people of another other department so that uh, a boundaryless structure is created which is so flexible in nature which is so flexible in nature that they are able to grow very fast but the question here is in creating an organization which is open to change which is flexible in nature which is dynamic in nature and which is able to cope up with an uncertain environment uncertain environment now that is only possible in a learning organization because boundaryless organization does not talk about uncertainty talks about flexibility does not talk about change but a learning organization is one which is very flexible at the same time adapts to change and takes care of an uncertain ever changing environment so the answer to this question is e learning organization a very small case study but an interesting question the case study i'm going to read the entire case study for you here organizations are finding that the best reward systems entails a combination of money recognition and benefits money is important of course but if a person earns 50 us dollars in incentive pay every month after a while this money monetary reward may begin to lose some of its power okay so the question the keyword here is that after a while the monetary reward may begin to lose some of its power that means we are moving from one uh, uh, motivation factor to another motivation factor which of the following theory of motivation is being talked about here very easy i want you to answer this question in the comment section below before i answer it theory x theory y does not talk about movement from one to the other equity theory does not talk about movement of one motivation factor to the other motivation hygiene theory also does not talk about movement mcclellan's need theory says that there are three needs need for power need for affiliation and need for achievement but it does not talk about movement of a person from one need to the other okay it is only maslow's need hierarchy theory which is probably the most common theory which talks about movement of uh, you know motivation factors of a person in a person from one factor to the other Let's now come to the last question. I hope you understood the last one, uh, the previous one. It is match the following, and there are three uh, uh, matching that you have to do: need for power, need for affiliation, and need for achievement. And as I mentioned in my uh, last question, it is a part of McLellan's theory of needs. So there are three needs: need for power, need for affiliation, and need for achievement. Now there are some examples given here, and you have to match. at mv corporation employee of the month is promoted immediately so we are highlighting the keywords to the post of manager and given a staff of up to 8 employees to extend their high performance further and contribute towards expansion of the 
enterprise so promotion immediate promotion what is that is that power affiliation or achievement let's uh, discuss other uh, uh, examples as well at express gardens the company gives a pat on the back award to employees who do an outstanding job and also has a copy of the notice of the award put in the employees file so you are uh, promoting achievement by rewarding them with an award at south carolina federal financial services in columbia the president and other top managers serve employees lunch or dinner as a reward for a job well done this is what you are trying to affiliate with the employees you are trying to tell them that we managers we top management are th there for service of you and want to communicate with you so to here is certainly uh, related with c that is need for affiliation 3 is b that is need for achievement and 1 is certainly power because it is uh, you are being promoted that means you are being given more power in the second one you are being awarded but you are not being given more power that is where a confusion normally lies and th that is where students get it wrong so the answer is 1 a 2 c and 3 b 1 a 2 c and 3 b so the answer is e here 1 a 2 c and 3 b okay so this is all for today's uh, session where we talked about five important case studies in the future videos also i will keep discussing questions from a diverse set of areas let it be management let it be finance let it be esi the focus is to pick up anything and everything that may be asked in your upcoming rbi and sebi examination okay all the very best i hope you like the video if you did do not forget to subscribe and press that bell icon so that you get notifications whenever i release a video and you don't miss out on any of these videos because it is a crucial time believe me all the very best take care